السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ألا وإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, today is the 20th of Rabi'ul Awwal and it's 1442 years after the Hijrah of the beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which coincides with the 6th of November 2020 Today is the night of Saturday, which is traditionally called the Friday night. And I welcome to you, welcome all of you to the discussion today with regards to the Sajda Sahu or the prostrations that are due when we have mistakes in the Salah. As human beings, we are all forgetting, we always are hasty and we are uh, we have the attitude of forgetfulness or the characteristics of forgetfulness. Hence, this is something that happens a lot in the prayer. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allowed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khairul bariya, the best of the mankind, to make certain mistakes and error, not intentionally, but unintentionally, because he was a human being. He was not an angel. And the hikmah or the wisdom behind that is, when those things has happened, how the Prophet Sallallahu corrected by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is what teaches us what should be Sajda Asahu or what should not be Sajda Asahu. And that's why the Ulama Al-Kiram Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when they uh, compiled the books of the Hadith, they compiled the books of the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of them specially mentioned the special chapter, which is uh, they, they titled as the Kitab Sajda Asahu the chapter of the prostration of forgetfulness as we have in Sahih al-Bukhari and other books of hadith. Some of the madahib of the fuqaha and the ulama and the, some of the people who blindly follow them, unfortunately, uh, uh, they say that if a person makes a mistake in the prayer, mistakenly add something or mistakenly mm -hmm. delete something, or he is in confusion, this person should exit the prayer completely and start praying again. Some of them, they claim that this is the correct way to do. Some of them, they say that um, if you make some mistake in the prayer, the only way you can make Sajda Sahu is if you are facing the Qibla. You finish the prayer, you are facing the Qibla, and then when you remember you made some mistake and you, you can you can make such so. But if you turn away from the Qibla, then you cannot make such so. Some people, they said that if you spoke after the prayer, let's say somebody prayed three raka dhuhr, the Imam prayed three raka dhuhr, and then he turned away from the Qibla. Usually when we leave the prayer, we turn away from the Qibla. We don't face the Qibla. We turn away and face the people. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet and the people tell you, you prayed less. Some of the people of the Madahab, they will tell you, in this scenario, you cannot do anything. You have to start the prayer all over from the beginning. None of these is from the, none of this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet. In fact, these are all against 
what is being reported from the Prophet ﷺ and what has been understood by the Sahaba al-Kiram radiyallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum. So we do, not, we do have to have the right knowledge so that the following scenarios does not happen. Sometimes if we don't have the right knowledge, we will end up rejecting the Sajdah Sahu and keep on repeating the prayer, where we, whereas we do not need to do that. This could also happen that we end up doing Sajdah Sahu for no reason or for invalid reason. For some, some people they say, you will see that many times, a person finishes his prayer, he makes two Sajdah. Always. Why? Because he said, perhaps I made some mistake, so I'm making Sajdah Sahu. And this two prostration will cover my mistakes. This is not from the Sunnah of the Prophet Somebody would say, what is wrong in it? This is what's wrong in it. Because it is not according to the Sunnah of the Prophet It could also happen that uh, we will end up doing Sajdah Sahu, but actually the correct position would be that we have to repeat the prayer. And we will talk about these scenarios. The right knowledge will save us from all of these mistakes. It could be also the situation that many of them, they say, we are utterly confused. We do not know what to do. And even we do not know how to do the shirda. So is it before taslim? Is it after taslim? Utterly confused. Because so many people say so many things. So these things can happen. These are problems. What is the solution? We need to learn the religion. The Quran and the Sunnah is our marja. This is where we go back and first we study the deen, the usul, the foundation. And then we come to the understanding of the ulama who said what and that it usually becomes clear. It usually becomes clear. So these are the things we should basically study. What is Sajdah Sahu? What are the reasons for Sajdah Sahu? So when we understand that, we should be able to alienate, like remove all the other unnecessary reasons. The people will make you do Sajdah Sahu for that. For example, some people might tell you that if you scratched and moved in your prayer for certain times, you have to make a Sajdah Sahu. For example, so you would know, is this really valid or not? How to do the Sajdah Sahu and when to do the Sajdah Sahu? Is it before Taslim? Is it after Taslim? What if, if I finished my prayer, I spoke, and uh, I walked, I talked, then I remembered after 5-10 minutes, can I still make such that so? These are the things that we need to study. <coughs> Seeking the truth is very exciting, very challenging, and it is also fun. Because once you learn the religion, and you see the truth, it's like light after darkness. It's, it's like ease after difficulty. It's like cure after sickness, and it is like success after hard work. This is how we have to take the religion as, and we should not be intimidated. Let not anybody tell us that you are not a scholar, so don't read Bukhari and Muslim, don't read the Quran, because you are not a scholar, which is true. A common Muslim is not a scholar, but a common Muslim can study the Kitab and the Sunnah, the Hadith and the the Quran and the Hadith and of course we cannot just open the book of the Quran and book of Hadith and just understand it our way that's going to be deviance of course we have to take this help of the scholars but there has to be a certain study of basics otherwise we will be always utterly confused and we should not remain in that situation because in that situation if somebody prays in that situation, somebody worships, is worshipping and praying Allah, praying to Allah upon dhan, upon uh, guests. And Allah Ta'ala says, Inna dhanna la yughni min al shay'a. So with this uh, sincere effort and sincere intention to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, let's, let's look what we have with regards to Sajdah Suhu in the Quran and the Sunnah. Now there is nothing directly mentioned in the Quran about Sajdah Suhu. Nothing directly mentioned in the Quran, but indirectly, yes. Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ Establish the prayer. So, and Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُدُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever your messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prohibits you, stay away from it. So these are the two ayat that connects us to all the adillah and all the proofs that are not specifically in the Quran, but 
indirectly mentioned in the Quran. So if somebody asks us, is Sajda Sahu mentioned in the Quran? We can say yes, indirectly. But if somebody asks us, it is, is it mentioned directly? No, it's not mentioned directly. But it doesn't have to be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how to reveal His book, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when to and where to send His message. So if He wanted, He could mention Sajda Sahu in the Quran, but He didn't do that. What did He do? He revealed it to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu وَمَا آتَكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُدُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ So we follow the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi al-Ummi, the unlettered prophet, الَّذِي لَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى The one who did not speak from his desires, in هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَى Whatever he said, and of course whatever he did, is based upon the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we hear the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did this and did that, we know that this is for sure supported by Allah. Otherwise, he would not legislate this in the religion. He actually has no authority to legislate anything in the religion unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves it. When we look into the Sunnah of the, when we look into the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, with regards to the mistakes that has happened to him in the prayer, we see the following things. Okay? We see that the Prophet وسلم, one time omitted the tashahud fully. Omitted the tashahud fully. Okay, meaning like he was supposed to sit after the two rakah, the Dhuhr or the Asr prayer, but he didn't sit. Of course, by mistake, he forgot. So he prayed without sitting after the two rakah. This happened to the Prophet So what did he do? We will see. Also we see that the Prophet by mistake, because of forgetfulness, he added extra rakat in the prayer. So he prayed five rakah Asr as we will see from the hadith. And then also we see the Prophet prayed less. He was supposed to pray four. One time he prayed two. And he was supposed to pray four. And one time he prayed three. And all of this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Very authentic hadith. And the other thing that he referred to, although it didn't happen to him, he referred to is the confusion. When we are praying, sometimes it happens. Did I pray three or two? Did I pay three or four? And by the way, the confusion can be between one and four too. Let's say you are in the first rakah, and then you are utterly confused. Is it my first or fourth? Let's say you are in your fourth rakah, and you are utterly confused. Is it my first or fourth? This is called the confusion in the prayer. So what should be done? The Prophet has indicated to that. It did not happen to him. Another one is, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that if somebody is standing up from the second rakah without doing the tashahud, what he should do when he remembers. These are the five scenarios clearly mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is our umda. And usually, usually, these are the things that most likely happens. But then other things do happen. But these are the most likely. And if it does, these, thing, these five things happen, Alhamdulillah, we have clear evidence what to do. Just remember that. In those scenarios, you exactly know what to do. You don't have to worry about who said what. Exactly we know what to do. So let's look at the first scenario, which is when the Prophet ﷺ omitted the tashahud. And this hadith is reported by Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, in Kitab al-Sahu, the, the book of the forgetfulness, Bab ma jaa fi sahwi إِذَا قَامَ مِنْ رَكَعْتَيْ الْفَرِيضَةِ What comes with regards to the sahu, forgetfulness, when somebody stands up after the two rakah of the prayer. Meaning, after the two rakah of dhuhr or after the two rakah of asr, maghrib or isha. He's supposed to sit, but he got up. This is the hadith of Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Buhayna. Abdullah ibn Buhayna was a sahabi from the famous tribe of Azd Shanu'a. The Az Shanu'a is the tribe which is the Halib of Abdul, the Bani Abdul Muttalib. This is the family of the Prophet ﷺ. And you remember the famous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ compared Musa salam from the men of Az the Shanu'a. From the Az the Shanu'a. So Abdullah ibn Buhayna and many other sahaba were from Az the Shanu'a. And that's why they are known as the Azdis. Whenever you will see the word Azdi, Al Azdi, which means they are from Az the Shanu'a. رضي الله عنه أنه قال صلى لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ركعتين من بعد الصلاة صلوات ثم قام فلم يجلس. He said that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم one time prayed 
with us, meaning he led the prayer, and he got up after the two raka and he did not sit, i.e. he did not sit for the tashahud. So the people stood up with him, and this is a very important rule. When the imam makes mistake in the prayer, you can remind him. But if he continues to pray the way he is praying, you must follow him. And this is the evidence. فَلَمَّا قَضَى صَلَاتَهُ When the prayer was over, وَنَظَرْنَا تَسْلِيمَهُ And we were waiting for him to make the salam, meaning he has said the tashahud, everything. Now they are waiting for him to give the, the salam. كَبَّرَ قَبْلَ تَسْلِيمِ He made the takbir, Allahu Akbar, before he made the taslim, before saying salam alaykum wa salam alaykum wa ta'ala, فَسَجَدَ سَجْدَتَيْنِ And he made two sajda, وَهُوَ جَالِسٌ And he was sitting, ثُمَّ سَلَّمَ And then he made the salam. So basically, when we miss the tashahud of the second rakah, we do not have to make it up. We missed it, we do not have to make it up. What we have to do is, when we finish everything, at the last rakah, before we make the taslim, we make two sajda sahu. Normal prostration, like the prostration of the prayer. This is, there should not be any dispute about this. That this is before, inshallah ta'ala, the taslim, or before we salam out. Then, the Prophet sallallahu what do you used to do when he used to pray extra? I.e., he by mistake added more raka. Now, here is the thing, if somebody intentionally prays more, of course, his prayer is batil. His prayer is rejected. For example, let's say, it's four, he's intentionally praying five. Not allowed. So, but by mistake, he can pray six, seven, eight. By mistake. Okay? That is allowed in the sense that it's a mistake, but now he has to correct. Now, what happened to the Prophet This is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which is <coughs> reported by Imam al-Bukhari. And narrated by his student Al Qama, famous Al Qama and Ibn Mas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw the Dhuhr He prayed the Dhuhr five rakah. فَقِيلَ لَهُ أَزِيدَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ It was said to him, "Was the prayer increased?" فَقَالَ وَمَذَاك The Prophet said, "Why are you asking? What is that? Why are you asking this?" قَالَ صَلَّيْتَ خَمْسًا So they said, "You prayed five." فَسَجَدَ سَجْدَتَيْنِ بَعْدَمَا سَلَّمَا So he made two sajda after he made the tasim. Of course now, what happened here, you have to pay attention. He prayed five, the sahaba followed him completely. And then when he salam out, people were talking. And the Prophet also talked. So when he spoke with the people, was he facing the Qibla? Or was he facing the people? Of course he was facing the people. Of course he was facing the people. So when the people said, did the prayer in case the Prophet said, why are you asking? Which means what? He thought he prayed four. They said, you prayed five. So the Prophet he prayed, he, he did two sajda and he salamed out. So this happened when? After the taslim because he spoke. Now here is, remember we talked about that some people, they will say, if you spoke, if you did this, if you did that, you can make... You cannot make a sajda sahu. This is absolutely wrong. The hadith is completely contrary to what conditions they put. Sometimes people put unnecessary condition from themselves. They think that they are making things better. Actually, they are making things worse because they are going against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. What is the point of Messenger being sent as a as a Rasul, as a Messenger of Allah? And we are listening to his hadith and then we are saying, no, 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 let's make all our conditions. He, he, you prayed... You can only make sajda saho if you did not turn away from the, uh, the Qibla. You cannot talk. You cannot walk. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot. We say, where will you get all of this from? The Prophet spoke. He is the Messenger of Allah. He spoke. He faced the people. He faced away from the Qibla. And other nationally will see that he left the Masjid. Then he came back. All of this is Jaiz. So sometimes people make extra conditions and make things difficult for people and this is where the confusion is. Now the confusion will be removed. These things when you hear, you know this is just hocus pocus talk. Some people might have said it with good intention. Who cares? We are supposed to follow a Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith reported by Imam Muslim which had some addition of Al-Qama. Oops. 
वन सेकेंड या दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल एडिशन बिकॉज नाउ वी हैव द स्टूडेंट ऑफ अल अब्दुल इब्न मसूद इट हैपन टू हिम वन ऑफ द इतबाई ताबिन ही सेड और ताबिन ही सेड अलकमा Okay, sorry, no. This is the Hadith of Abdul Ibn Masud. Another version. Let me read that first. <coughs> Abdul Ibn Masud said, "The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the prayer. He made some act of omission or commission when he pronounced the salutation. It was said to him, 'O Messenger of Allah, is there something new about the prayer?' The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, 'What is it? Why are you asking?' They said, 'You said prayer in such and such way.' Okay. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned his feet and faced the Qibla. and perform to prostration and then pronounce the salutation and then turned his face towards us and said mm-hmm. if there is anything new about prayer i would inform you about that but i am a human and i forget as you forget so when i forget remind me and when any one of you is in doubt about his prayer he should aim at what is correct so whenever there is a mistake we do our best to correct it huh? and complete his prayer meaning you complete your prayer in that respect and then make two prostration asahu here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did the sajda asahu of course after the taslim after the taslim not before the taslim now the other addition in the arada narration in imam muslim sahih is very beautiful because it happened to alqama the student of abdul ibn mas'ud This is narrated Ibrahim ibn Suwaid. He said, "Kala salla bina alkama tu zohra khamsan." Alkama prayed zohr five raka. This is the student of Abdul ibn Mas'ud who narrated the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prayed five raka. Falamma salla ma, kala alqawmu ya Abu Shiblin, kada sallay ta khamsan. The people said, "O oh, Abu Shibl, this was his kunya. You prayed five." Kala kalla ma faaltu. He said, "Never, I didn't do that." قالوا بلا ده سيد نو يو ديد قال وكنت في ناحيه القوم وانا غلام ذا ذا ناريتر هو سيد باي بن سويد سيد ذات هي واز ات ذات تايم هو واز ا يانج بوي اند هي واز لايك ان ا كورنر اوف امونغ ذا بيبل سيتينغ موست لايكلي هي سيد فقلت بلا قد صليت خمسا هي سيد يس يو بريد فايف اند هي واز ا غلام ليتل بوي اوكي سو بت لوك دي وير بيينغ اتنشن what the imam is doing okay qala li so alqama said to ibrahim ibn suwaid wa anta aidan ya a'war and you are also blaming me oh the one eyed boy so i'm not sure whether it's a'war he was really one eyed or not or maybe this was one of the like you know uh, a taunting way alqama was talking of course this is not to humiliate them but this is one of the tradition that they had they would give sometimes some kind of laqab Uh, or a title to the people not to make fun of them but just to call them like uh, a'war one eyed or a'raj the one who is limping and so on and so forth you will hear that a lot from darwati uh, 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 ashab al hadith so he said you you one eyed boy you are also telling the same thing like everybody is saying kultu naam he said yes so the little boy was very smart <laughs> he didn't get scared you say no i'm saying what they are saying okay qala fan fatala fa sajada sajdatain so he now then turned towards the qibla and he made two sajda thumma sallam then he salamed out assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum shahid here this man who studied under al abdul ibn mas'ud spoke with several people facing away from the qibla these are the students of the sahaba okay and then when he it was clear to him that he did make a mistake he faced the qibla he made two sajda did he did he repeat the prayer because some people will come and tell you oh too bad you turned you made so many mistake you turned away from the qibla you spoke to so many people now you have to repeat the whole prayer we said this is absolutely against the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is why You see these divan, these these uh, books. We have to study with a very pristine mind. Look, the Quran and the Sunnah is not so complicated that general people doesn't understand. Little boy understood this. A little boy understood this. We can understand it too. Here is the thing: 
we should not use our mind to understand. We should understand based upon, of course, what our ulama, they teach. Then al qama he told them that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud told him, narrated to him, and then he narrated the hadith. He narrated the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu prayed five, and when he finished, he salamed out, wash wash nas people started whispering. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, ma nukum, what's your matter? Okay, then they said that, O Prophet of Allah, قَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهَ الْزِيدَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ Messenger of Allah did the prayer in peace قَالَ لَا Communication Communication between the Prophet ﷺ and the people Sahaba قَالُوا فَإِنَّكَ قَدْ صَلَّيْتَ خَمْسًا Said you prayed five فَانْتَفَلَ فَانْفَتَلَ ثُمَّ سَجَدَ سَجْدَتَيْنِ ثُمَّ سَلَّمَ ثُمَّ قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرْ آخر الحديث So then he turned turned his feet made to sajda of sahu then he salamed out, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah, and then he mentioned to the people that he's a human being, he forgets, and so on and so forth, as the other narration has mentioned. Then the Prophet ﷺ also prayed less. When he prayed less, what did he do? This is the hadith of, which is known as the hadith of the Dhulyadain, the hadith of the man who had long hand. So he had most likely longer hand than other people. So the Prophet ﷺ named him Dhul Yadain, the owner of the two hands. The owner of the two hands. And this is most likely the ulama, they said that the Ashab al-Hadid, they felt that this is okay. This is okay to uh, attack somebody with a certain name just to know. Like for example, Sulaiman ibn Mihran, one of the great scholars of Hadith. Sulaiman ibn Mihran, he was known as Al-A'mash. A'mash is the one who, the, like, you know, cannot see properly. He's the khafif al-basar. He cannot see properly. Meaning that he's blind. Abdurrahman ibn Hormuz, I believe his name, uh, the correct name. Uh, he was known as Al-A'raj, the one who's limping. And so on and so forth. There's many like this. Dhul Yadin. So, uh, the, the, the narrator of the hadith is Abu Huraira, but this hadith is known as the hadith of Dhul Yadin because Dhul Yadin is the one who had the audacity, or not audacity, like the courage to speak to the Prophet about the mistake. Abu Huraira said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Nabi, the Messenger Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Sallam, Ihda Salatay al Ashihi, Qala Muhammad, Wa Akhtaru Dhani al Asr, Rakatayn, Thumma Sallama. ثم قام إلى خشبة في مقدم المسجد فوضع يده عليها وفيهم أبو بكر وعمر رضي الله عنهما. أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه said one day the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prayed that the prayer إحدى صلاتي العشية meaning the evening prayer either ظهر أو عصر. the sub narrator which is محمد بن سيرين the great عالم and the great uh, uh, Muhaddith, Muhammad ibn Sirin, who is known as ibn Sirin ibn Sirin, he said, Akhtaru dhanni. My guess mostly is that it was Salat al-Asr. Walakin, Imam Muslim, when he reported this different version of the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he mentioned the version where clearly it says he prayed Dhuhr. And some narration said clearly he prayed Asr. Are these two incidences? It could be. Allahu Alam, I did not study the, the details of it, but I just do want to mention that there is versions of it. Some of them clearly mention Dhuhr, some of them vague, and some of them clearly mentions Asr. It could be two incidents, it could be one incident. Allahu Alam. Anyway, but the point is not that point is what happened there, because this is the point. He, he prayed uh, two rakah. He was supposed to pray four because he was muqim. He was not a traveler, so he was supposed to pray four, but he prayed two. He finished the prayer, then he got up, and then he, there was a piece of log at one corner of the masjid, he went there and placed his hand over there. All of these descriptions, this is a hikmah, wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there in this revelation, in this, in this hadith. So that we can be a refutation against those people who put unnecessary condition and make people's life difficult. Okay, they say, oh you stood up, you did this, you did that. Repeat the prayer. I know that some of the brothers in some of the masajid, the imams, they would pray and that they would tell him, you prayed three. He starts and he said, let's pray again. They tell him, Sheikh, you can just pray one. And these are the people who are not even Sheikh. And the one who is leading, he calls himself Mufti. 
I'm the mufti, I'm mufti, I'm mufti. Okay? So he leads the people. He says, no, no, I want to be on the safe side. Subhanallah. You want to be on the safe side and the Prophet Sallallahu was in the unsafe side? It cannot be true. Okay? These are the people who are basically doing things based upon the opinion of their madhab. The opinion of their madhab is more beloved to them than the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to understand that because you will hear this and then you will hear somewhere some people are saying something else. Maybe they are correct. I'm not saying everybody is wrong. But we need to look, go back to the Kitab and the Sunnah and, 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 and measure. You know, why this Mufti or this Imam double pays something, whereas the Sunnah of the Prophet is clear. This Hadith is in Bukhari. Okay, and he says his Mufti he should be knowing this Hadith. Because he's a Mufti. He's not just an Imam, regular Imam. He's a Mufti, the one who should give, he gives fatwa, he should be, at least he should be very well versed with the Divan is Sunnah, the books of the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Otherwise, he cannot give fatwa. Okay, but these are the people who, who are today mufti, and people are just go and take their fatwa because people call them mufti, mufti, mufti. So we need to find who are the real muftis. The real muftis are the ones who will always guide you with the Kitab and the Sunnah. They will not give you a vague answer like, I want to be on safe side, or I want to be this, I want to be that. Anyway, uh, Abu Hurairah said, Am among the people were Abu Bakr and Omar. And Abu Bakr and Omar knew that the Prophet ﷺ prayed two rakah. But they were so shy because of the honor of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. He said basically, فَهَابَ أَنْ يُكَلِّمَهُ They were very shy and they were basically feeling this haiba, this honor to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. They could not talk. وَخَرَجَ سُرْعَانُ النَّاسِ And a bunch of people who were like busy, you know, running quick, quickly, they left. فَقَالُوا And some of them they said, أَقَصُورَةِ الصَّلَاةُ Did the prayer shorten? But some of them they left. They should have verified. وَرَجُلٌ يَدْعُوهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ ذُو الْيَدَيْنِ A man who was known as ذُو الْيَدَيْنِ The Prophet used to call him ذُو الْيَدَيْنِ فَقَالَ أَنَسِيْتَ أَمْ قَصُرَةِ The ذُو الْيَدَيْنِ said, Did you forget or was it shortened? Did you forget or was it shortened? So the Prophet told him, Lam ansa wa lam tuqsa. He said, I didn't forget, and it was not shortened. Qala bala qad nasita. So then Dhulia then said, Then for sure you forgot. Because wa mayantiku anil hawa. He doesn't speak from desires. So if the Prophet said it has not been shortened, which means what he forgot. By mistake he did it. Okay. Fasalla rakatain. So the Messenger corrected himself. Uh, he then said, I am the messenger of Allah, I am always right, you are wrong. Fasalla uh, rakatain, he prayed two more raka, thumma. Salla rakatain, he didn't repeat the prayer. This is after spoke and munakasha back and forth. He did not repeat the prayer. Salla rakatain, meaning he added what is missed. Okay. Thumma sallama, then he said the salam. Thumma kabbara, then he said Allahu Akbar. فَسَجَدَ مِثْلَ سُجُودِهِ أَوْ أَطْوَلْ And he made the sujood like the sujood of the prayer or little bit wronger. ثُمَّ رَفَ رَأْسَهُ Then he raised his head فَكَبَّرَ And he said Allahu Akbar. ثُمَّ وَدَعَ رَأْسَهُ فَكَبَّرَ Then he again put his head down and he said Allahu Akbar. فَسَجَدَ مِثْلَ سِجْدَ سُجُودِهِ أَوْ أَطْوَلْ And he made the sujood like the sujood of the prayer or little bit longer. ثُمَّ رَفَى رَأْسَهُ وَكَبَّرَ Then he raised his head and he made the takbir. So what happened here? When he paid less and he was reminded, whatever was left over, he added that prayer, he added that prayer, and then he salamed out. He said, Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah, Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah. Then he made two sajda, like the sajda of the prayer. This is very, very, very important because you know the discussion is coming. A lot of people will ask this question. This is the answer for all of those questions. And then he got up and the other narration says he salamed out. So you have to of course give the second salam. The first salam you salam out of the prayer, then you do the two sajda sahu, then you again salam out and you complete the prayer like that. This is the hadith of Dhuliyadin. Um, then we have the report of Imran ibn Hussein in Sahih Muslim. That the Messenger وسلم, he prayed Asr and he made the salam on the third rakah. 
So he's supposed to pray four, but in this case he prayed three. Thumma dakhala manzilahu. Thumma dakhala manzilahu. Then he entered his house. So he left the masjid. Some people will say what? If you left the masjid, if you turned away from the Qibla, you cannot make sajda sahu. This hadith is against them. This is in Sahadith in Sahih Muslim. Okay. Thumma dakhala manzilahu. Faqama ilayhi rajulun yuqalu lahu al-khirbaqu. Wa kana fi yadayhi tulun. A man was called Khirbaq and he had he, he was he had a long aim. So some of the translation it says his hands were long and some of them they said he had a long aim, meaning he could shoot far. Fakala ya Rasulullah, he said, O Messenger of Allah, Fadakrallahu Saniahu. And he told the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu what the Prophet Sallallahu did. Fakharaja Ghadban, the Messenger Sallallahu was very angry. Ya Jurru Ridaahu Hatta intaha ila nas and his dress was uh, dragging and he came to the people okay faqala asadaqa hada he said did he this man spoke speak the truth faqalu na'am they said yes fasalla rak'ata rak'atan so the prophet sallam prayed one rak'ah because he prayed three if you remember thumma sallama then he said salam thumma sajada sajdatayn then he prayed then he did the two sajda of sahu Thumma Sallama and then he salamed out. This is what the Prophet did when he prayed less. When he prayed less, he added what he needed to add, it, add then he salamed out first. He did the tashahud everything. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Allahu Akbar, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar, rabbi firli, rabbi firli, Allahu Akbar, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar, salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is exactly what is reported from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now comes the other issue which happens to us a lot. What if a person forgets how many rakat he prayed? Confusion about the number of the rakat. It could be made between any number. Okay? And we have the hadith of Abu Hurair and Bukhari. This is the general hadith what the Prophet has mentioned. General. Allah said, when the call of the prayer is made, shaitan takes to his heels passing wind so that he may not hear the adhan. And when the call is finished, he comes back. And when the aqama is called, he does the same, he runs away. When the aqama finishes, he comes back. And then he starts casting thoughts and doubts in the heart of the musalli, the people who are praying. Say, remember this, remember that. Till the praying person forgets how much he prayed. How much he prayed. If any one of you does not remember whether he has offered three or four, this is Mathal, an example, rakat, then he should perform two prostration of sahu while sitting. Two prostration of sahu while sitting. But this does not say when to do it. Inshallah coming. The next hadith will tell you when to do it. And this is the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri in Sahih Muslim. All the narration which we mentioned today, brothers in Bukhari and Muslim, Bukhari and Muslim. The authenticity is beyond imagination. Okay. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reported, the Messenger Sallallahu said, when any one of you is in doubt about his prayer and he does not know how much he has prayed, he does not know how much he has prayed, three or four, he should cast aside his, die, cast aside his doubt and base his prayer on what he is sure of. Then perform two prostration before giving the taslim. Before giving the taslim. If he has prayed five, meaning he actually has prayed five, he will make his prayer an even number. This will make an prayer to his prayer an even number for him. And if he really prayed four, then this to sajda would be a humiliation for the shaitan. So this to sajda is literally a humiliation for shaitan because he tried all these things. He messed up the prayer, tried to mess up the prayer, but he was unable to do that. This exactly will happen when we follow the sunnah. When we make our own condition and own way of doing sajda sahu, it will not work. And then comes the last narration uh, which we mentioned that what if a person, uh, if he is sitting in the sec he finished, he is praying for rakah of the whore, mathalan. And after the two rakah, instead of sitting, he got up. But then he, this is the scenario, while getting up, before establishing, before establishing himself in a standing, he remembers what he should do. 
is this hadith will tell us. This hadith, by the way, is reported by Imam Abu Dawood and others, but the versions which are in the Sunan are not authentic because there is a narrator called Al Ju'fi. Al Ju'fi, he is da'if. However, this hadith is reported by Imam Al Tahawi, Mushkil Al Athar, and other ulama, and Imam Al Albani, and many of the muhaddithun, they have authenticated the isnad because there is no weak narrator in this chain and the hadith is absolutely authentic. This is the hadith of uh, uh, Qais ibn Abi Hazim, the famous tabi'i. Qala sallabina al Mughiratu ibn Shu'ba. Mughiratu ibn Shu'ba. Al Mughiratu ibn Shu'ba is one of the great Sahabi. He said that Mughira ibn Shu'ba prayed with us. Faqama min al rakataini qa'iman. He stood up after the two rakah. Okay? Meaning he did not sit for the tashahud. Fakulna subhanallah. So the, the people who are praying behind him, they reminded him. As we know that when the Imam makes mistake, we are allowed to tell him, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Okay? Fa'awma. So he, with his hand, he gestured. Waqala, Subhanallah. Al Mughir ibn Shoba, he responded to them by, with his hand somehow, I'm not sure how. Awma meaning like with the hand, ishara, with the sign. He's telling them, Continue the prayer. And he says, Subhanallah. So he's responding to them. I understand, but you need to follow me. Fa fi salatihi. So they he continued to pray. Falamma qada salatahu. And when he finished his prayer, was And he made the taslim. Sajada sajdataini wa huwa jalisun. He made two sajda and he was. After, after he made the taslim, he made two sajda while he was sitting. Thumma qala, Salla bina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fastawa qa'iman min julusihi. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed with us, and he stood up standing after his sitting. Famada fi salatihi. And he continued to pray. Falamma qada salatahu. And when he... Uh, finished his prayer, Sajada Sajda Taini Wahua Jalisun. He prayed to say he made two sajda and he was sitting. So Makal then he said, Ida Salla Ahadukum when somebody prays, Fakama min al Julusi. Huh? Uh, and he stands up from his sitting of the Turaka, where he was supposed to sit, he didn't sit and made the tashahud he stood up. Fa illam yastat if he did not establish himself in standing, then let him sit down. And he does not have to make the two sajda. But if he completed his standing, then let him continue his prayer. Let him not go back. And let him make the sajda while he is sitting. While he is sitting. So what the Prophet basically said is, if we are standing up and we stood up and we completed the standing, we don't go back to sitting. Even if the people are saying subhanallah, because a lot of people they do that. But if the standing is not complete, then you remember, while at that time you remember, or the people are saying you subhanallah, then you sit down and you say the tashahud. Now you did add something. For this, do you have to make the sajda to sajda saw? The Prophet said, There is no sajda saw for you. But if you did miss it because you stood up completely, you missed it, now you make the two sajda of the saw. Now, we have the hadith of uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Buhayna where the Prophet has made the sajda before the taslim. And we have the hadith of Mughira ibn Shu'ba, which he did after the taslim. This is why some of the ulama, they said, the matter is easy. You can choose whether you want to do before or after. Does not matter. This is a position of Imam al-Albani, Sheikh Mustafa al-Adawi, and many of the mashayikh of our time. Rahimahumullah ta'ala hayyan wa mayyitan, inshallah. Now, the conclusion is that when the Prophet ﷺ omitted the tashahud and the Prophet ﷺ talked about the confusion in the prayer 
with a two or three or three or four or one or four or one or three or one or two, whatever, you remove the confusion and you base it upon what you're sure of. When you're doing that kind of prayer, in these two scenario, you make you the the sahu should be before the taslim. This is clear from the hadith of the Prophet As with regards to the other, where you by mistake added, or you by mistake prayed less, and you are correcting on all of these things, in these cases you make the sajda sahu after the taslim. After the taslim, this is the conclusion of what we see from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Before we finish, inshallah, a couple of things. Sajda sahu is only for the prayer related issues. Omission or addition. Omission or addition. That's why one of the great Imam al Buhuti, and he has the book uh, called Al Kashaf al Kina'. This is the explanation of the book Al Iqna'. Of, and this is the book of the, the Hanabila Madhab, the, the, the fiqh of the Hanabila Madhab, very, very famous book. In that, in that explanation, Sheikh Al Buhuti, he said, The prostration of forgetfulness is prescribed when one of the reasons for it is present, namely, doing something extra omitting something or not being sure of how many raka you prayed you have a confusion except in the case of janaza it's very beautiful because in the janaza we know that if we make a mistake we cannot make sajda because janaza has no ruku janaza has no sajda and he said this does not and very important this does not include when one's mind wanders because it is not possible to avoid it so it is forgiven so is there any sajda sahu for waswasa Whispering of the shaitan, there is no such day so for that. Okay. And we have the hadith of uh, uh, Abdul, Abdul uh, Uthman ibn al-As, radiallahu anhu. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he complained. He said, O Messenger of Allah, the shaitan intervenes between me and my prayer and my reciting of the Quran and he confuses me. He overwhelms me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is a shaitan whose name is, uh, his name is Khinzib. He has a special name, Khinzib. Okay, the hadith in Sahih Muslim. When you feel him, that he is coming, seek refuge in Allah, like saying, A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaitan Ar-Rajim, or A'udhu Billahi Sameel Ali Min Ash-Shaitan Ar-Rajim. فَتَعَوَّذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْهُ وَتْفِلْ عَلَى يَسَارِكَ ثَلَاثًا And then you blow on your left hand side three. So you say, A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Or you can say, when I seek refuge in Allah from Khanzib, Khinzib, something like this, you know, uh, because the Prophet didn't specifically mention a certain wording for this istiada. So you say whatever you want to say to seek refuge from this devil, and you say, tuk, 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 blow, light blow on the left hand side. Now here is the thing, if somebody made mistake, like, for example, he uh, supposed to pray Dhuhr, and he started with the intention of praying Asr. And then in the prayer, or after the prayer, he realizes that. What should he do? Can he just make such that so? The answer is no. Because this prayer is battle in the Asr. Because the intention is not there. So what he has to do, as he has to break the prayer, according to the most correct opinion, and he starts the prayer with the right intention. So there is no such that so here. For example, somebody didn't say Allahu Akbar, and start the prayer. Somebody said Allah, or somebody just raised the hand and prayed. Is this allowed? No, it is not allowed. Why it is not allowed? Because the Prophet said the entry to the prayer is takbir. And takbir we cannot do in our own way. It has to be done certain way. Allahu Akbar, raise your hand. No other way. I cannot say Bismillah, I mentioned the name of Allah and I start the prayer. This prayer is batal, according to the most correct opinion, because the hadith is very clear. So in such scenarios, we cannot make this sahu and make the mistake correct, correct the mistake because here the asal of the prayer is itself batal. So what the person has to do is he has to start the prayer, he or she has to start the prayer from the beginning. Is there any sajda sahu for movement in the prayer? And that's why it's very amazing that when we go to say al-Bukhari, right after the kitab is sahu, the Imam al-Bukhari brings the chapter, the chapter, the book of actions in the prayer. And he brings all the narrations where the Prophet ﷺ did movement. For example, one time a slave girl came and asked the Prophet some question while he was praying, and he, with his hand, he made a shara. Wait. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that one day he was praying and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed to him the Jannah and he saw a great bunch of grape hanging, this hadith in Bukhari and he went, he wanted to grab it. He moved forward, he wanted to grab it but he could not of course and then he came back. And the Sahaba saw this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi we know from the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that one day his cousin while he was praying the night prayer, his cousin Abdullah ibn Abbas, he came and he stood on his left, right hand side, sorry, left hand side. The Sunnah is to stand on the right hand side of the Imam. So he held him with his ear and he pushed him all the way and he turned him and put him this side. All of these actions and many narrations are very clear that these actions are allowed in the prayer. These movements are allowed in the prayer. And these movements does not, of course, nullify the prayer. And there is no need to make sajda sahu. Because the Prophet ﷺ in none of these reports is mentioned that he made sahu, sajda sahu. Because these are not mistakes. Mathalan, for example, the Prophet ﷺ one time in the hadith in uh, the Sahihain, Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam al-Sulami, the hadith of Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam al-Sulami radiallahu anhu. You know the famous hadith of him, he had a slave girl uh, and he slapped him and all that. But when he came to the masjid, he didn't know that much. And uh, he, uh, I can't remember right now what happened. Somebody sneezed in the prayer. And he said loudly, Arhamukallah. So everybody started looking at him. And making signs with the hand or something to stop him. And he said, why are you doing this to me? This happened in the prayer. He spoke. After the prayer, the Prophet ﷺ corrected him. He said the prayer is for tasbih, tahleel, and tahmeel. But he did not tell him your prayer is batil. So these things does not make the prayer batil. We are not saying that we can talk in the prayer. We are talking about a person who doesn't know and he spoke. This is a special scenario. As with regards to movement, like for example, sometimes... Uh, you know, a child, the Prophet ﷺ, while he was praying, a, a animal came and was running behind between him and the sutra. He ran towards the wall so, and the animal went behind him. And he continued his prayer, Sallallahu So, let's say a child is trying to move between us and the prayer. Can we move and stop him? Yes. A father or mother is praying and the baby is crying in the, in the car seat or whatever. Can he go and pick him up or pick her up and then continue the prayer? While in the state of prayer, yes, yes, and yes. And none of these things, regardless of how much the movement is, will break the prayer. We are not saying about moving everywhere. Okay, We are talking about certain movements, for sure, which are needed for a musalli. These are all done by the, Asah, the Prophet ﷺ, and this is all clear, and there is no sajda sahu for that. Now, how do we give this sajda sahu? These two sajda sahu, can be given before the taslim mm -hmm. or after the taslim, as you can see. If it is given before the taslim, how do you do it? You say that tahiyat, you are the last rakah, you say that tahiyat, you say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and you say Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam, and all the du'as that you want to say. Now you are about to make the taslim, don't make the taslim. You make the two sajda sahu, like the way you make two prostration of the prayer, then after that you immediately salam out. There is no tashahud after that. Okay. The other way to do it is, you at the last rakah, you finish everything. Tashahud, Darud Sharif, or the Darud Ibrahimiya, and the du'as at the end, then you salam out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you make two sajda as sahu. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In both of the scenarios, there is no... And there is no tashahud in both scenarios. No tashahud after the sajda sahu. There is no tashahud after the sajda sahu. A lot of people they ask, wow, how do we do this two sajda? And what do we say in this two sajda? And what do we say between the two sajda? We do it exactly as the hadith Abu Hurairah said. The Prophet ﷺ did it like the sajda of his prayer or a little bit wrong, longer. So if you want to make it a little bit longer, that's fine. But what do you say? Subhan Rabbil A'la. Subhan Rabbil A'la. 
And between the two sajda, if you are saying of bighfirli, of bighfirli, that's what you say. As you do the any two <coughs> sajda of the prayer. Some ulama, they said it is mustahab to say, Subhana ma la yanamu wa la yashu. Glory be to the one who does not sleep and the yashu, the one who does not forget. And Imam Ibn Hajar, he said, I tried to find any narration, there is no narration for this. And this, I'm, I'm mentioning this here because sometimes people will tell you, oh, in this sajda, you must do this, say this, this, this. So if they say such, how do we verify it's correct or not? We need to have a hadith from the Prophet And that's what Imam Ibn Hajar said, there is no proof for this. And many times, the innovation or the bid'ah happens because we just take it for granted. One of the very common innovation, very well-known innovation and common is the saying of Sadaq Allah Al-Azim after we recite the Qur'an. This is something is done by many of the Qur'an. Okay, and many people, they teach it as it is deen. So we ask the same question, did the Prophet ever say Sadaq Allah Al-Azim? Never ever. There is not even any weak narration. And some of the ulama of the hadith, they said not even a narration which doesn't even have a chain. I mean, it doesn't mean that if it, if it is a weak narration, we're going to follow it. No. But they're saying there's not even a weak narration. It's just most likely came from tradition. This is exactly what this is. Somebody had recommended, it looks very beautiful. It started, people started following, everybody started following, it became deen. That happens. So we have to be careful. There is no tashahud after the sajdai sahab. Why we are emphasizing it? Because... Some of the madhahib, especially those who are from the subcontinent, like us, who are taught the Hanafi madhahib, this is exactly how they teach us to make the sajda saw. They say, when you have to make the sajda saw, you say the tashahud and everything, everything. Then you say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, one time on your right hand side. Then you make two sajda saw. Then you sit down again, and you say everything. At-tahiyat, Allahumma salli ala, everything. Then you say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Does this have any foundation? No foundation. No foundation whatsoever. So, this is one of the reasons Imam al-Bukhari, he has a special chapter in his Kitab al-Sahu. He said, Bab, man lam yatashahad fi sajdatay as sahu He said, the chapter of the one who does not say the tashahud after the two sajda of sahu. And he said, Wasallama anasun wal hasanu wa lam yatashahad. Anas, and this Anas ibn Sirin, Al Hassan, this is Al Hassan al Basri. Uh, none of them uh, none of them they did the tashahud. Waqala Qatada and Qatada this Qatada ibn Diyama Sadusi, one of the Tabi'i, he said, La La Yatashahadu. You're not supposed to make the tashahud. As for the narration of Qatada, there is a dispute about the chain, whether it's authentic or not. As with regards to the narration of Al-Hasan and Anas and uh, Al-Hasan al-Basri. Anas, I think this is Anas ibn Sirin. I could be wrong. It could be Anas ibn Malik. Allahu Alam. I can't exactly mention, I can't, I don't see any notes here. So, um, but uh, although this is mentioned in the form of Mu'allak, meaning the chain is not there, but it is being connected by Imam ibn Abi Shaiba uh, through Qatada. So the chain of narration is seems to be authentic. Uh, then Imam uh, 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 al-Bukhari brings a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu uh, because he was very clear about the description of the Prophet's sajda. So he said the Messenger Sassim stood up and offered the remaining two rakah and performed the taslim and then said the takbir and performed two prostration like his usual prostration or a bit longer and then he got up. There is no mention of the tashahud in the narration of Abu Hurairah or any other narration. That's why. When Muhammad ibn Sirin was asked, Muhammad ibn Sirin, the Tabi, who reported the hadith of Abu Hurairah, the hadith of Abu Hurairah, when he was asked, should we do the tashahud? He said, the hadith of Abu Hurairah does not mention the tashahud. Now, there are some weak narrations and also fabricated report, weak narration report attributed to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and fabricated narration, which says that there is tashahud after the sajdatain, sajdah of sahu. None of these narrations which are some of them are marfu some of them are mawkuf uh, none of these narrations are authentic which talks about the tashahud after the sajday sahu 
Since the shahu should be done for both obligatory and optional. Okay, because we have the narration in Imam uh, in, uh, in the Musan of Imam Ibn Abi Shayba with an authentic chain authenticated by Imam Al Albani on the authority of Sa'id Ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu rahimallah. He is a tabi. He said we used to make the sajda of sahu for the nawafil like the two sajda in the obligatory. Why we are mentioning this because there are some of the ulama they say that sajda sahu is only for the obligatory prayer, only for the obligatory prayer. And they bring the information, their proof from some of the reports from the Tabi'i. Some of the Tabi'i, they said, there is no Sajda Sahu for the Nafal prayer. And these narrations are reported by Imam Abdul Razak Sanani in his Musannaf. However, what is reported by Imam Ibn Abi Shayba on the authority of Sayyid Ibn Musayyib is what is being mentioned by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The general hadith where the Prophet said shaitan comes to you and tries to fool you until you forget and this and that and when it happens to you, you make the two sajda. So the hadith of Abu Hurairah is general, it does not mention about obligatory optional. So the correct position is that sajda sahu is due, must be done for of course for obligatory and of course for optional. There is no proof to say that for optional we don't need to do sajda sahu. Sajda can be done after talking, after chatting, after walking, after doing a lot of things. How many times? After many times, much time. Five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, two hour, whenever you remember, you make the sajda sahu. And Imam Muslim reported on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sajda sajda tay as sahu ba'da salami wal kalam. Intahal kalam. Stops all the dispute. Abdullah ibn Masood said the Messenger Sahasan performed the two prostration of forgetfulness after the salutation and after talking. So if somebody says it has to be a small amount of time, what is the proof? If somebody says it cannot be a long amount of time, what is the proof? No proof. If there is no condition mentioned in the Kitab and the Sunnah and somebody puts condition, he has the burden of proof to bring. Otherwise his condition will not be accepted because it is not legislated by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sajda is saying for the male and women, female. And the last point before we finish is, if the Imam continues to make mistake in the prayer, some of the Madahib they say that the people should sit and not continue the prayer with the Imam. They sit and wait for the Imam to finish the prayer, then the Salam out with him. This Fatwa is absolutely against the teaching of the Prophet the practice of the Sahaba, nothing like this. Where it came from, Allah knows best. The Sahaba prayed behind the Prophet the Prophet prayed two when he was supposed to pray four. He prayed five when he was supposed to pray four. He prayed three when he was supposed to pray four. And they continued the prayer with him. Mughira ibn Shoba, if you remember the hadith of Mushkil al Athar, he prayed and he stood up after the prayer and he, he was, he completed his standing. That's why when the people say Subhanallah, go down, he didn't. He, he uh, uh, signaled them to continue the prayer and he also said Subhanallah to answer them back. That he knows what is happening, follow me. None of the time the Prophet said, if you feel that I'm making a mistake, sit down. And don't continue the prayer until I give salam. No. The sunnah is you continue with the mistake of the imam. Until he says salam. Then you negotiate with him. Negotiate with him. Talk with him. Tell him he made mistake. And if the imam is a sunni, he was going to accept it, inshallah. Not a problem. Uh, imam Muslim has a very beautiful narration. And with that we will finish, inshallah, today's session. This happened to, in the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, to one of his uh, stepbrother. His name was Al-Walid ibn Uqba. Al-Walid ibn Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt is one of the arch enemy of Islam. His son Al-Walid and another one I think is Khalid, both of them accepted Islam in the Fatih Makkah, the victory of Makkah. So Al-Walid ibn Mus uh, Uqba is a Sahabi. Was he was from the Sigar al Sahabi. And all of the ulama of the tarikh, like uh, Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, 
Imam al-Bukhari, Imam ibn Sa'ad fi Tabaqat, Khalifat al-Khayyat in his Tabaqat, and all of these ulama in the books of the Tabaqat, in the books of the Ma'rifat al-Rijal and Ma'rifat al-Sahaba, they have mentioned that Al-Walid ibn Uqba is a Sahabi, lahu suhba. He had companionship. I want to mention this very clearly, because what we are going to hear after this is maybe a little bit shocking. But remember, as Sahaba al Karam, Kulluhum Wadul, all of them are trustworthy, and we do not open our mouth to criticize them. This hadith is reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and also Imam Muslim in his Sahih. Uh, there are some weak narrations, but these are the authentic ones. Let me read it to you the, the, the version of Sahih Muslim. Uh, Hudayn ibn al Mundir Abu Sasan reported I saw that Walid was brought to Uthman ibn Affan as he prayed two rakah of the dawn prayer. And then he said, I make an increase for you. In another narration, he prayed four rakah, Fajr. And he said to them, do you want me to increase more? Why he did that? Because he was drunk. And two men bore witness against him. One of them was Humran. Humran is the Mawla or the freed slave of Uthman. This will teach us who these Sahaba they were and what was the Islamic Empire. In the Islamic Empire, the ruler's brother could be a criminal, could be the, I don't want to say what the word criminal because he's a Sahabi, could be the one who is at fault. And the one who can witness against him could be a slave or a former slave. This is Islam. So Humran, he made the, the freed slave of Uthman and Humran, by the way, is one of the reporters of Uthman. If you go to Sahel Bukhari, you will see Humran is anything from Uthman ibn Affan. He said that he had drunk wine, Khamar. The second one gave witness that he had seen him vomiting. Two witnesses. So Uthman said he would not have vomited unless he had drunk. And by the way, this is his, this is his brother, his uh, stepbrother from his mother. So Uthman ibn Affan, his father is Affan, but Walid's father is Uqba. How is it? Because Uthman's mother was also married to Walid's, Al-Walid's father, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Okay? I think her name was Arwa. Anyway, uh, then he said, Uthman said, Ali, stand up and lash him. Ali said, Hassan, stand up and lash him. Okay? Thereupon Hassan said, let him suffer the heat who has enjoyed his coolness. So Hassan was not going to do that. Hassan is the son of Ali Radiallahu. So Ali Radiallahu was not happy what Hassan said, meaning like he's not following the instruction. And Ali said, Abdullah ibn Jafar, stand up and flog, flog him. So Abdullah ibn Jafar is the son of Jafar ibn Abi, uh, Abdul Muttalib Radiallahu. And he began to flog him and Ali counted the stripes until these were 40. Then Ali said, stop now. And then said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, gave 40 stripes, meaning like 40 lash, 40 lashes. Abu Bakr also gave 40 lashes. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu gave 80 lashes. And all these fall under the category of the Sunnah. But this one, which is the one with 40 lashes, is dearer to me. Why? Because it was done by his cousin and the beloved Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. This is the story of Sajda Sohu, my brothers and sisters. It's uh, something that we should study. And I'm sure that there would be other unique questions that will come up. We have to keep on studying it. But these are the gist of Sajda Sohu. And these are the rulings of Sajda Sohu from the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu and as Sahabat al-Karam. This last narration is to show that when Walid ibn Al-Walid ibn Uqba was leading the people in four rakah, they didn't stop praying behind him. They prayed behind him. They finished the prayer behind him. Okay, And that is to prove that if the Imam, even in that scenario, which is he is drunk, in that scenario, he is making mistake, the followers should follow. Because this happened in the Zaman al Sahaba. Anhum. There is a narration of uh, uh, Ibn Shaba which says that Abdullah ibn Masud prayed behind him. This narration is not authentic. Okay? But as Sahaba and the Tabi'in, they prayed behind him. 
and they completed the prayer. And this is one of the evidence that the ulama they bring, those who say and refute the position that you should not stop praying. You should continue with the imam. When he finishes, you correct. Now here is the situation. If the imam is not uh, fixing his mistake, you can make sense there's some yourself and fix your problem. That's not a problem. But if the imam is a sunni, alhamdulillah, he's going to accept the mistake and he's going to correct himself. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.